Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to Grace and Mercy Ministries Bible Study this evening. We do Bible study every Tuesday at seven o'clock, and it is that time. And so we are here to just get ready to uh, enter the presence of the Lord and learn about him and open ourselves up to him. And so I just want to give everyone a couple of minutes to come in and uh, like and share, please. Please like and share and let someone else know that this time is happening right now so we can learn about our Lord together. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Come on in and like and share. <laughs> Come on in to the presence of the Lord and just lift him up with us on this evening. Come in and like and share. Come in and lift him high with us. Yes, God. Come on in, like and share. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening. I'm Minister Jamika. Welcome to Tuesday Night Bible Study with Grace and Mercy Ministries. Like and share, please. Yes, God. Yes, we lift him up. Come on in and join us. Like and share. Invite your friends. Invite your family to come and share in the glory of the word of the Lord. He alone deserves our worship and our praise. And so we enter into praise and worship of him this evening. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Lord, we just come into your presence this evening, Lord. Lifting our hands open wide and spiritual surrender, Lord. Letting go of control and asking to receive more of you, God. God, you sent your son Jesus to die so that we could receive the Holy Spirit, Lord. And so we receive that spirit on tonight, Lord. We receive the Holy Spirit into us, Lord, into our lives, God. We come to eagerly spend time with you in prayer and in your words to align our hearts with yours, Lord God. That is our deepest desire, Lord, just to be in alignment with you, God. We come seeking to know you, Lord. We make ourselves childlike and ask you to come within us, God. We are putting our full trust in you, Lord God. This wicked world will tell us to do something different, Lord. They'll tell us to trust ourselves, to trust the government, to trust our, our, our family and our friends, Lord God. But we put our full trust in only you, God. Because we know that you reign over us and every other thing, Lord God. And so we're just opening up ourselves to just surrender and be fully trusting in you, Lord God. 
so that we know that you got us, God. We know that you got us. We open ourselves to your love, Lord, and everything that your love brings, God. But the change that your love brings, God, the correction that your love brings, God, we open ourselves to that, Lord. We seek to become more and more faithful in the little things and the big things in life, Lord. We can't just be faithful on the outside, Lord. Just be faithful in the eyes of men, Lord, God. We want to be faithful in your eyes, God, in everything that we're doing in our life. We want to be showing ourselves approved and being faithful in you and to you, Lord. We want you to be well pleased, Lord. So we turn to you now to listen for the words that you will give us to set souls that are being captive free, Lord. We're coming and we're, we're just humbling ourselves, Lord God, in your presence, God, and just asking that we become more and more like you, Lord. Help us to open up and see whatever it is, whatever it is that we need inside of us, in our hearts, in our minds. What is it that we need to change? What is it that we need to push towards to be more like you, Lord God? We welcome your presence. We thank you for the ability and the sweet, sweet privilege to even be able to come into your presence, Lord God. To even be able to come into your presence, Lord. You are so great and so awesome and so mighty and so powerful, Lord. And little, little us are able to come into your presence and be with you, God. You are with us. And we are so thankful, God. Thank you for that privilege. Thank you for that honor. Thank you for lifting us up, Lord, and calling us your own, Jesus. We don't even know how to express how thankful we are, Lord, God. We don't even know how to express it. But, God, we just we we know that you know our hearts, Lord, and we pray that you hear our hearts now, Lord, God. We just lift you up, Lord. We welcome your presence, God. We welcome your presence. We welcome your presence in every single moment of our lives, Lord. We welcome your presence in this Bible study. We welcome your presence as we go from this Bible study and we walk into the rest of our lives, Lord. However you may lead us, Lord, we just welcome your presence, God. We welcome your presence and we thank you for your presence, God. Because we know that without you, we are nothing and we could do nothing, Lord. Oh, and the way that you sustain us, God. You breathe the breath of life into our lungs, God. And we are so thankful. We are so thankful. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. Oh, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. So I am talking to you tonight um, about something that a lot of Christians spend a lot of time avoiding, (laughs) but it's something that's essential to, to us, our walk with God and us becoming closer to God. And I'm talking to you. Um, about sin and turning away from sin. And so the title of Bible study tonight is Way. Um, And, you know, it's a hard subject because we tend to not, we want to think that we're good and we got it once we're saved. We're okay. No matter what we do, we can just keep going because God's got us. And he does. He loves us still, even when we mess up. But we're responsible. We're responsible. Uh, We become more responsible once we come into our lives. Um, And we have some things that we have to do in that responsibility. And one is turning away from sin. So regardless of walking with the Lord your whole entire life or if you're just turning to him, now I can guarantee you that we all have that one thing in common. Sinners. We're born into it ingrained into many of us from a young age to be seen as acceptable. And so when we come into contact with Jesus, we're bombarded with these feelings and and thoughts of of doubt and questioning ourselves and who we are. Um, One of the biggest questions that most most of us have at one point in time or another is how can God use someone like me? How can God use a sinner like me? And we have things, you know, that are going through our minds. Uh, 
I, I know I can't be the only one who thought this. I know I can't. I, I know that, you know, many of us have felt like, how how can he use me? I'm so messed up. I'm so unworthy. I'm so dirty. How can anything make me clean? Uh, we're covered in guilt and shame, and it's hard to accept that God could love us even with all of our sinfulness and all our humanness. We wonder what we could have deserved, um, done to deserve this love. And the answer is that we haven't done anything to deserve it. We haven't done anything to deserve it. He gives it freely. He, that's his choice to give it freely to us because he loves us. And so um, that guilt and that shame, those things do not come from the father. Just as he did not <clears throat> originate sin, guilt and shame do not come from him. Um, we have to repent from our sins, but that repentance is not meant to make us feel bad about ourselves and question who we are in God. That repentance is, is a gift that he gives to us to be able to say that, you know, we acknowledge our mistake, that we know that we don't have the power within us to overcome these things on our own and then to change. And that's the important part that a lot of times, you know, we think that just saying sorry is, is, is where it ends and saying sorry, that's just the beginning. That's just be the beginning. It's the change the repentance, the change from that old thing to the new thing. That is the key part of this. And so that's the hard part. <laughs> that's the hard part. Um, God, But God tells us in Matthew 9, 12, for I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. So he has plans for us because we're all sinners. We're all born into sin. Um, and so um, he came, he said he came to call us this, okay? So, so we, you know, we're hard on ourselves and um, we think we're, we're too damaged or messed up to be used by God. And that is just simply not true. In fact, the very opposite is true because God uses broken people to minister to this broken world that we live in. We live in a broken place and there is nothing outside, nothing that can be done that is outside of God having the power to use it according to his, to his will and his purpose. So even our brokenness, he uses to minister to people, to build people, for us to lead people to him. So I have a, a few examples of people in the Bible who were broken, but God used them anyway. So Saul, or Paul, as he became, Saul was the, the, a man that murdered many, many Christians. Um, and after the encounter, an encounter with the Lord, he changed his name to Paul and he became one of the most dedicated and influential Christians. He wrote two thirds of the New Testament and brought many people to the Lord. King David committed adultery and murder, yet God still forgave him and used him to minister to others. Matthew was a tax collector who would charge people more than what they owed to make a profit for himself. God be, be, forgave him and he became one of Jesus's 12 disciples. Rahab was a prostitute, but even still, God moved in and used her to help protect his people. So God wasn't looking at these people and saying, oh, you know, uh, they're too far gone. Like they're, they're too messed up. I'm not going to even touch that one. That's not that's not our God. That's not how he looks at us. And that's not how he thinks of us. Uh, Jesus came and died for that sin so that he can look at us as his precious children through the blood of Jesus. Um, and so. Instead of looking at them like they are too far gone, God turned their lives around so that they could be a light unto him and incur for this world. Um, and he's. The same God that he was yesterday, he is today. 
And so he's doing that still. Okay. He's doing that still. God is still using the broken to help mend this world and to help bring it to him. Um, many of you know, know my story. Um, <clears throat> and you know, you know, I was, I was a pretty broken person. I, uh, through some some abuse when I was a little girl um, that gave me an idea of myself that was so far opposite of of uh, who God was calling me to be, who God did me to be. The idea that I had of myself because of the things that happened to me. Um, you know, I grew up at, at the, by the time I was 11 or 12, I thought that my purpose was to please people sexually. Um, and so I grew up thinking that that was my purpose. And that led to a lot of broken behaviors that led to a lot of um, abuse, uh, continued abuse to myself, um, abusive relationships. It led me to accepting things that I should not have accepted into my life. Um, and it led me to a, a lot of sin. It led me to a lot of sin and a lot of temptation. You know, I was, um, I spent a lot of time because of what I thought of myself and what I thought my purpose was. I spent a lot of time being uh, promiscuous in my teenage years um, and my my early 20s. I, my body was not safe to me. And, um, and so I just gave it freely. Um, and, you know, my mental health was, my mental health was, uh, I was going to say to be lacking, but that, that is, that is putting it way too lightly. <laughs> um, my mental health was shattered at several times throughout my life. Um, particularly in my early thirties, my mental health was shattered and, led me to a place of the most brokenness that I've ever experienced. Um, you know, when I had my, my overdose, my purposeful overdose and uh, attempt at suicide. <clears throat> and after that, you know, I lost everything, um, my kids, my house, my car, my job. Um, I was homeless. I, my kids went to foster care. Um, I lost my sanity. I was walking around. Um, hallucinating, um, thinking evil thoughts. I had voices that were telling me all kinds of things about myself, and I was in full, full belief in those things. Um, <laughs> and then God found me and snatched me out of that. And when I say snatched me out of, I say that meaning that. One night I went to bed thinking this way with these hallucinations, with with um, all this negativity and running away from any solution. And the next morning I woke up running towards solution. I woke up with hope. I woke up with um, with a feeling that my purpose is more than just to suffer this life. And so I was broken and he came and got me. He came and got me out of that brokenness. Um, and then he didn't just come and get me. He, he came and got my whole family too. <laughs> he came and got my whole entire family and, and walked with us out of the brokenness. Now, it was a process, y'all. It was a process. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. It was a process to walking out of that brokenness. Um, yes, God can change your life. He can change your mind. He can change your heart. But even when he does that, there is a process to walking out of that brokenness and walking into who God is calling you to be as a kingdom. There's a process of getting away from the sin that led you down the road that you were on. Uh, there are, 
even whenever he saves you from that, there are still consequences. There are still consequences here on this earth for every action that you do for every, um, every, you know, mistake that you've made, there's still consequence. Um, and so, so there's a process that we have to walk through to turn away from that. And so I'm going to give you, um, a few steps on turning away from sin. So the first step is making a to avoid temptations. So <clears throat> we need to make a plan to avoid temptations and everyone has temptations. Um, we all have we all have flaws. We all have temptations. <clears throat> um, and so we need to be practical in making a plan to move away from those things. So if you, um, you know, some people have temptations uh, or personality traits that are similar to their families or people's that they, people that they hang out with. Um, sometimes they're just unique to you. Um, but you have to discover what in order to even make the plan to them, you have to discover what they are. Um, for me, you know, whenever I was um, still out in the world, going to the club was like the highlight of my life. Like I was just up in there. I was ready to party. I thought about it all. Week. Um, I made plans. I figured I was going to figure out what I was going to do with my kids when I had them. Like this was top priority <laughs> in my life. Um, mistake number one, because we shouldn't put ever put anything ab above God. Um, but this, this going out was top priority in my life and it was it brought me so much excitement and just I was just happy to be knowing that I was going out man when I got a plan in place I was like I'm ready it's about to go down it's going to happen and um that was what I thought the joy was in my life um and so whenever god started affecting these changes within me um I was still, I was still going out at some points in time. I was still, um, you know, going to parties or, um, you know, I would go out, uh, you know, with my husband or, or something like that. <clears throat> and it led right back to those same temptations because when I, the first thing I wanted to do was drink. If someone was there with something to smoke, I wanted to smoke. Um, I wanted to, uh, you know, I wanted to be sexy and have people look at me and draw attention to myself. Uh, that's what it was all about. That's what the whole thing was about. Um, it was about all those temptations. And God told me, you cannot go to the club anymore. Um, and so, <laughs> so I had to make plans to avoid that place. And it was difficult at first because I still really, really wanted, I was making plans to avoid it, but I still really, really wanted to go. And I still had feelings of jealousy when everybody else was getting ready to go out. And, um, you know, it was hard. Um, <clears throat> but I, I prayed to God about it. I prayed for him to take that desire away from me him to help me discover how to move from that desire within myself. Um, and he did, he did. The desire got smaller and smaller. And as, as the kingdom got bigger and bigger in my life. So the kingdom was here in priority. The club kept moving down and down and down. So I got to the point uh, now, like I, I feel, a, you know, a little bit of, feeling of repulsion when I even think about going to be in a place like that. Um, 
But I don't want to be in a place like that. It's not fun. Uh, it's uncomfortable. It does not sit with my spirit. <laughs> That's not where I'm supposed to be. And I know it. Um, and I feel it to my core. And so um, that, that the club was a portal that led to a lot of sin for me. Um, and in identifying that temptation and identifying the flaws within myself that caused me to want to flock to that place, that was how I was able to shut it down. That's how I was able to call my flesh into subjection under the word of, lo of the Lord. And so that's the first step to identify, um, identify the temptations and make a plan to avoid them. <clears throat> and okay. let's scroll down my thing. Um, and yeah, I had to set, I had to set goals for myself, um, as far as dealing with that, that fighting that temptation as well. Um, you know, I, <laughs> at, at, at the beginning, you know, I was gung ho and I was like, you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do this and I'm not going to sin anymore. And I'm just going to be perfect. Um, and guess what? I, I, I disappointed myself. <laughs> I disappointed myself big time. Um, and then every time I disappointed myself, that opened up a space for doubt. And like I said before, that spirit of doubt is not of the kingdom of God. It's not of God. Um, and so I had to set, you know, a reasonable goal. Um, and so that meant for me involving other people in my plan. Um, and, you know, I told people who were spiritual, um, who uplifted me spiritually, who uh, prayed with me. I told them about these, about these temptations um, so that I wasn't facing it alone, first of all. Um, and so that, you know, they helped me come up with other things to do um, in place of that. And so um, in doing that, you know, I was taking responsibility and that's a big part of it is taking responsibility for, for your, um, for your flaws and for your own flesh. We have to take responsibility for it. Um, God's given us free will and in that free will, we have the capability to act to act. We have the ability to um, tell ourselves what to do and how to do it. And so um, that's what we have, to, we have to accept. You know, we have to figure out what it is that's there, first of all. And then we have to take responsibility for it um, and act on it. So he, Jesus uh, gave us authority over the forces of evil. So when we become Christians, we have authority over anything that's not of God. That's what evil is, anything that's not of God. Um, and so we have to act on that authority, especially when it comes to uh, things that we are tempted by and things that our flesh tells us, um, because our flesh our flesh will 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 try really really hard to pull us back into our old self and so it's our responsibility to tell our flesh our flesh to be quiet <laughs> um to sit down we're not doing that anymore we're walking with god now um we have to the next step is uh to let go of our past sins. That one is so, so hard for a lot of Christians. Um, we can't change our past. 
And many of us get overwhelmed and overcome with our sin, things that happened in the past, um, the sins of, of others that happened in the past, you know, in regards to done to us or sin, mistakes that we've made, we come, we overwhelmed by that. And that's where we get stuck at. We get stuck in, um, in holding on to those, those old things. And what we have to do is let go, uh, let go of those past sins. We have to let go of them. They hold, they hold no power over us anymore. And, you know, we have to ask God for forgiveness. We have to repent of those sins. So if you have past sins that you have never repented of and they come to your remembrance, then by all means, call it out and um, ask God for his forgiveness and repent of it. But remember, repenting is is making that change from it. So when you realize, you know, what your old sins were, you have to make a decision. It's a decision. It's a choice that we make to not go back and do those things again. And we may mess up. We may, you know, as they call it, relapse. Uh, and when you do, you get back up, you let go of that past sin, and you keep going. And um, don't discount the progress that you've made sinful past every time that you mess up. And so we we can't, we can't continue to hold on to that. Um, the next step is to is to fight with our behavior. Okay. So A lot of situations, you know, like I was talking about the club, that 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 behavior led me to sin. There were certain people in my past uh, that led me to sin and situations and they made it easy that those situations made it easy for me to sin. Um, and so I had to move myself to the right setting. I had to get myself around the right people. I had to start moving myself away from the things and the people and the places that led me to sin. Um, you know, I had, I had addictions and I had to stay out of those places where I took, where I took um, part in, in those addictions. I wasn't going down to, uh, you know, Kent street anymore or, or Baker street or whatever. Um, I was staying away from there because those were places that that led me to sin. And that's where the people were hanging out that, um, you know, if I let them in, they could easily, easily talk me back into that. Because um, the thing about sin is feels good. And so a lot of times to us, it feels good to our flesh. And so that's what makes it so hard to avoid. Um, but we have to start changing our behavior. And in changing our behavior, we have to get, a lot of times we have to get help with that. So that's not something that is easily done alone. Um, you know, back to my story, um, whenever I was making these steps to change my behavior, I had many, many people involved and, you know, I believe God sent these people and there were, there was different, different people. It wasn't all just church people. Um, he, you know, he sent therapists, he sent in-home therapists, he sent mental health workers, he sent, um, my addiction, uh, counselors, um, he sent new friends, you know, I, he sent help. He was my help, but he also sent help here on earth uh, for me to be able to make those changes that I needed to make. So you don't have to do this alone. Um, 
nobody is saying that turning away from sin is an easy thing. What I'm saying is that it is doable. It is a doable thing by the power of Jesus Christ. It's a possible thing. Um, all things are possible through him. And so, you know, a lot of times people, people are um, expecting, you know, a miracle change. And there's a process to this change. Um, there are, you know, the, there are things that you have to do in order to, to be able to make these changes um, as far as applying yourself. Okay. So you have to apply yourself to make changes. And when you make these changes, you have to apply yourself to continuing these changes. You have to be persistent. That's the next step. Be persistent. Um, the doesn't just go away. Person, places, and things are still going to be there. Even when you avoid them, you'll still know that they're there. You just won't be off in the middle of it. Um, temptation is going to be persistent. Sin is going to be persistent. It's going to be persistently there. And um, sometimes when we make that conscious decision to fight that temptation, it makes it it makes it even stronger. I don't know if anybody else has felt that, but you know, when I'm trying not to like gorge my whenever I was uh I was I ate myself up to 300 pounds at one point in time and I had to make a change, a drastic change in order to lose that weight and get myself back to a healthy weight and a healthy body. Man, when I decided that I was going to do that like you can't avoid food <laughs> food is there food is all around um man there's cravings got and 20 a hundred times stronger and so um i didn't give up though i was persistent in what i was doing i was persistent in choosing which foods that i was going to put into my body i was persistent about being around people who were going to help me to be consistent about exercising um and i was able to lose 115 pounds and so the same way that i applied that persistence in that um that process of losing that weight I apply that persistence now in the process of growing closer to God and moving further and further away from sin. So I'm fighting for my, my life and uh, for the lives of others that are depending on me to, to be an example of, of, of Christ here on this earth. Um, uh, be, an, be a Christ-like example. And so, you know, I have to fight. Um, I have to fight those temptations and I have to be persistent about the things that I'm doing to make sure that those temptations never overtake me. Um, I don't ever reward myself, allow myself to reward myself with, with any um, sinful break or allowance. Um, and so, you know, a lot of times we, we get tired when we're, when we're trying to be persistent about something, we get tired and we think, you know, I'm just going to take a couple days off of reading the Bible. Um, you know, if we're fasting, like, uh, you know, uh, God will still love me if I just take this <laughs> one bite of food, even though that I, I know that I'm in the middle of my fast or, you know, whatever it may be, um, that is instant gratification and that is deceitfulness. And so that is just dis disobedience to God immediately. Um, and so, you know, we have to fight that and work towards breaking our bad habit. The way that you work towards breaking bad habits is working towards for placing those bad habits with new, habits, with new good habits, um, with virtuous behavior 
and do it over and over and over again. Um, and so, you know, like I told you in the beginning, um, when I was talking about the club, you know, I didn't feel like not going to the club. I wanted to go to the club. I purposed to not go and I replaced it with other behaviors that were um, acceptable to God over and over and over and over. And eventually that big desire that was in my brain to go get that, that those things that I was finding in the club that got smaller and smaller and it got replaced bigger and bigger with things that were of God and of his kingdom. Um, and so that is a big part of changing our behavior. Um, scientifically, whenever you replace uh, behavior that affects you negatively with something that affects you positively, repeatedly, you uh, build what's called, um, well, I won't use the scientific word, you build new connections in your brain. You build new con connections in your brain. And so those old connections that gave you uh, excitement from, you know, your drug or your drink or sex, you know, being uh, outside of marriage or uh, whatever it is that's your temptations, those connections grow smaller and weaker every time you build the new connections and those grow stronger and stronger. Um, and so that is part of our fight in turning away from sin. Um, that's something that we that we have to do. But in order to know the good behavior that we're supposed to be doing, we have to be reading the word of God. Um, you know, those, those are things, and, and there's, those are things that you can't figure out on your own. Um, sometimes what feels like good behavior to us is not acceptable. And so we have to be in the word and learning what is acceptable to him. Um, And we have to remember to um, study the scripture and, um, you know, it, when we look at the Bible, some of the people that are given the most reverence in the Bible had really, really, really big struggles with temptation and with sin. Um, Adam and Eve committed the first sin by giving into the temptation of eating the forbidden fruit. Um, King David gave into sin so that he, uh, you know, by having a soldier killed, soldiers killed, soldier killed so that he gave into temptation and steal and steal his wife. And so um, reading the, in reading the Bible, we're able to read these stories and see and understand how these men and women um, that God talks about in the Bible struggled with their temptation, struggled with their sin and overcame. And so that is the last step that I have um, is that we have to be studying the word. And um, I really probably should have put that as the first step. <laughs> Uh, but those, either way you put them, those steps are all important. Um, but the word is the foundation of it all. Uh, if we don't know what God wants of us, what God wants us to do, what's acceptable in his eyes, um, then all the rest of it is, is pointless. Um, because that is, that is where that is where his his but the word is a manual for us um and so you know god is god wants us to turn away from him and and he's telling us to do anything that he hasn't done himself because he sent his son jesus um who was and Jesus was tempted by sin. 
Jesus was tempted and he turned away from sin. And our ultimate goal is to try to be more like Christ. And so I know it feels like a big task. Um, and, you know, sometimes it feels like we're not capable of doing it. And in honesty, um, on our own power, we're not capable. It's through the power of God that's within us that we are capable of doing all these things, um, we're, that we're capable of turning away from sin. Um, and so, you know, try not to be discouraged whenever you mess up. Try not to be discouraged uh, whenever it gets hard. Um, just remember to be persistent. Um, keep pushing, keep going. And those those changes will take effect. And that's how you build the lasting change. Um, and so, yeah, just end with um, a prayer to God. Um, and, uh, you know, if anybody has any prayer requests or anything like that, I ask you to put them in the chat. Um, and I'll go back through later and reach out to you and I can pray with you um, about those things or someone on the, on the worship team can pray with you about those things. So I'm just going to take us out in prayer. Okay. Lord God, we come to you on this evening, Lord, just humbling ourselves, Lord, uh, in welcoming your presence, Lord. We open up our hearts and our minds and our ears to hear and understand and receive your word so that we may be empowered to act in this world on your behalf as the body of Christ. Lord, we are laying on our own lives and our purpose um, and purposing to become more like you. We're studying to show ourselves approved so that we can handle and carry out your world in this realm as you intend God. We are calling on the Holy Spirit this evening to teach us how to come together and agree as your church about everything concerning you, Lord. We pray to be reminded to live as you have called us. We pray to be reminded to live with humility, Lord, to live with unselfish gentleness, patience, and loving one another, Lord. We want to strive to keep the oneness of your church so that we're committing ourselves daily to be of the same mind to be united in the Holy Spirit, God, committing ourselves to, instead of returning evil, evil for evil and insult for insult, Lord, we're committing ourselves to bless people in your name, Lord. We are praying for the welfare of anyone, everyone who is um, under my voice, Lord God. We're praying for their protection and we're praying that souls just can be saved, Lord. We're praying that you continue to give us the words, God, that we need to say, Lord. We we pray that you continue to guide us in your word so that we can find the words that we need to say, Lord, in order to be able to continue reaching people, Lord, and setting people free, God. Um, Lord, we're learning about turning away from sin, and we thank you for sanctifying us by the truth of your Lord, of your word, Lord God. We repent and turn away from our wicked ways, Lord. We thank you for consecrating yourself for our sakes so that we can walk sacredly on our mission for you, Lord God. We declare ourselves washed by the blood of Jesus and made clean, God. We command our flesh to stand down, to do evil, and to learn to do right according to your will, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for dwelling within us and walking with us, Lord. We purpose to steer clear from close relationship with those who would pollute our hearts and our minds, Lord God, with evil. We submit ourselves to you, Lord, body, mind, and spirit. We strip ourselves of the old self and put on the new nature, changing whatever needs to be changed in our lives to make it Accessible unto you, Lord God. Our heart's desire is to be used by you, God. And so we leave corruption and compromise behind us because we know that those things have no place in the kingdom of God. God, you know the inter internal and external battles that we are facing on today, Lord. God, you know that there are 
who are fighting the hardest fight of their life, even on tonight, Lord, just to get closer to you, just to get free, Lord God. There are people who are being attacked and shunned by their families, by the loved ones they love most because they are in search of you, God. And so we pray your comfort and your peace to wash over them, Lord God. We pray that something happens on this night. Something is moved within them, Lord, so that your love is tangible to them, Lord, so that they can know that it's there just as they know those people standing in front of them and beside them are there, Lord God. Lord, we declare that the sufferings of the present time are not worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed in us. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our strength. Lord, we thank you for being our strength, for being the love that's within us, Lord, that us through these situations that are coming against us, Lord, in our fight to be closer to you, Lord God. Lord, I ask that you will just bless everyone who is listening right now, Lord. I ask that this Bible study be used to intrigue someone to continue studying on their own so that they will get a better understanding of what is considered sin in their life and what they need to let go of and change, Lord, and move on to be close to the Lord God. I pray that your glory is just continuing to be revealed in us, Lord, so that we can be proved, Lord God. And we just thank you and we bless you and we lift you up. God, you are so mighty and so powerful and so wonderful, Lord God. And we just thank you that, that Lord, you continue moving. You continue moving within us and around us, Lord. And so when even when we do get discouraged, Lord, we can turn to you and we can lift these concerns. We can lift the concerns of our heart, Lord. We can lift the concerns of our minds up to you and know that we have a safe place within you, Lord. We have a safe place within you, God. And we just thank you for that, Lord Jesus. We pray that um, that we'll just come to know you, God. We pray that temptations will be diminished, Lord God, in people's lives right now, Lord. We pray that you will take those temptations away, Lord, and still what needs to be instilled within people in order for them to begin changing their behavior, changing their mindset, changing their thought patterns, changing the words they say, changing the actions they take, Lord God, because we know it's possible, Lord. We know it's possible through Jesus Christ, Lord. We ask that you make us living examples of that change so that people can continue to see that it's possible and continue to turn towards you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you and we lift you up in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.